I've come up with this six different organizing personality styles because one of the things I always found every time I would go into a new client's home was massive books on how to get organized. <laughs> <laughs> and they would say to me, why doesn't it work for me? I was like, well, because those books are written by people who are organizers and they don't think the way you do. So the first style that I'm going to talk to you about, if you want, you feel free to follow along with the handout, is the triangle. Now uh, the triangle is intuitively organized and one of the things the triangle would like, and Adipa is my assistant today and is going to help me, would be technology. Triangles are intuitively organized and they have no trouble with it. They love technology. This is their best buddy, the brother P. Tetch, because they label everything. It's just, a, it's just a real natural for them. If there's one thing about triangles, is that they don't understand that other people are not triangles. <laughs> <laughs> they think that everyone in their family is just purposely trying to aggravate them by <laughs> doing other things. So um, that can be their challenge. And every one of these styles is excellent and perfect. They're just all different. So if you are a triangle, you're intuitively organized, or at least even part of you, please raise your hand. So we have a few here. Yeah, partly. Yeah, partly. Partly. In the office, out of the office. Yeah, see, and it can be different. It could be different before and after you had children and you know, all those other things, too. So as a triangle, you have so many strengths and gifts. Great leadership. You can do projects by getting them started and keeping track and getting them finished. So the triangle has some wonderful things uh, that they offer. And also, the triangle probably loves technology. So that's their best thing, is technology. They just, they love it. So if you're a triangle, most likely you keep your whole calendar and your to-do list on your smartphone. So if you're a triangle and you love your smartphone, raise your hand. Okay. Tell me one thing you love about it. It's just all right here wherever I go. It's okay. like, I don't have to remember it. It's just, I put it right here and I can look it up. All in one place. <laughs> So that is the beauty of the triangle. Now I'm going to go on to style number two. Style number two is the visual. Visuals need to see their stuff. Visuals like pretty things. <laughs> Oops. Um, visuals like color and see-through. So they like to use things like this in their office. And visuals are great at storytelling. Visuals are good at teaching. They can describe things in a way that no other style can. <laughs> Visuals need to keep their stuff out. They need to see their stuff because out of sight is out of mind. <laughs> so with a visual, they love beautiful things. So let's say they have all of a sudden their stuff is kind of junking up and they, they're not happy with it because it's bugging their visual side, they'll take this beautiful bag and they'll fill it with all kinds of junk and stuff it underneath <laughs> the dining room table and they'll throw a gorgeous tablecloth over it and they'll put uh, you know, some flowers. But there's this little lurking thing inside of them saying, is there something I'm forgetting to do? So visuals need to be careful about that. So visuals love working with colors. So if you're a visual, you know, head on over to Bed Bath & Beyond and you know, use things like this and you'll be very happy. And this way, you know, you can put your stuff in here and then if you have a nice to-do list, you might want to write down what you've put in there and when you need to go back and get it. So a lot of women are visuals. How many, of, uh, how many visuals do we have here? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> women, women are visuals. And visuals have many gifts as well, as all the styles do. The third style is the round. Now when I call it a round, it doesn't mean that you necessarily like round things. It means you think outside the box. <laughs> Rounds look at things very differently from how <laughs> other people do. And they would not ever really be very comfortable working at a perpendicular desk. It would just not suit them. They're better off working from the couch or from the floor. <laughs> uh, rounds, being very tactile, could really enjoy something like this. So if you're around and you don't 
you don't think kind of like in the perpendicular and parallel lines like the rest of the world that you th does. You did better before Starbucks was even open. You were at the coffee house working instead of in your own house. You love looking out the window. That's where the round gets their inspiration, not looking at a computer screen. How many of you are rounds? <laughs> oh, by the way, I said there were six different organizing styles. I think I did, but really there's seven because your unique combination, because you could have a little bit of all of you in this, you're the seventh. So that's why if you want to use a little technique from this one, a little from that one, those are the things that are going to work best from you. Now just a little note about this. I feng shuied my dressing room area and I discovered that I had this with the toilet paper in it in my wealth corner. So I decided, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that was necessarily a bad thing, but as soon as I did the feng shui, which I learned about in the mastermind group, I decided to relocate that. So there you go. <laughs> so, so we have a lot of rounds in here too, but I'm not surprised, this is a very creative group. <laughs> Stacker, okay. The most prevalent style of organization are the stackers. Stackers have excellent qualities about them. The most fascinating is that they're flexible. Stacking allows you to be flexible, so it's naturally a good way for you to keep your stuff. You stack it. And if a stacker called the office and said to their assistant, it's the second stack from the left from my computer. It's about a third of the way down. It's beige. It's that piece of paper. Could you get that for me? Because they pretty much know what's in every stack. And that's the beauty of stacking. Um, now, if stackers at their extreme start then stacking on pretty much any flat space, is fair game? Okay. Once it gets to the floor, that's when you want to look at your stuff and say, maybe I'm keeping this too long because uh, stacking and keeping everything is like a giant insurance policy, but if you never can make a claim on it because you can't find it, it's not really yeah. doing what it's supposed to do. So one of the things I help stackers do is to go vertical. So instead of having things laying flat, we tip up and go vertical. I'm sure you've seen all these. It's called a little sorter. It's a step sorter. And it enables you to take a whole bunch of stuff and go vertical with it and actually still see whatever it is. You could still see. And there's one tiny little tip, and I'm going to have Deepa hold this. I'm going to grab this. <laughs> we all know about manila folders. Here it is, one third cut. You write the name on here. But a lot of people don't know about this little technique on the bottom. So every one of these little bends holds 25 sheets of paper. So if you are a stacker and you swear to yourself that you're going to use the sorter, but you have this feeling that you might go back to your stacking ways, <laughs> label the spine. And this way, if you like to keep it in a stack, you'll be able to still see what's in here. So you notice the stacker is also a visual because we've got the colors. Thank you. Okay. So how many stackers do we have? Yay. <laughs> yeah, lots of stackers. Of stackers. And so I would like one of you to just tell me what are, what are the benefits for you of being a stacker? Who would like to say yes? Please tell us. One benefit is when my children or my husband needs something, they'll call me and I'll know exactly what shelf it's on, second drawer to the left, halfway back, and I know that. There you go. So stacking works for you. Yes. Another one. You can work on many projects at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, so there are a lot of benefits to being a stacker. So sometimes it gets a bad rap, but don't believe it. <laughs> okay. All right. The fifth style is also fascinating because they all are to me. That's the cyclone. My very first client I ever had was a cyclone. And he was a writer and he did a lot of other things. He was a day trader and so it was a, you know, I learned all about these businesses. And he just had paper a sea of paper from one end to the other, and every time he would go to find one thing, he would make a mess of the rest of it. <laughs> and brilliant, cyclones, cyclones are great at starting things. They're very good at starting, but they get bored with the details. <laughs> um, they, they love, they're visionaries, they're inventors. Did you ever see Einstein's desk? <laughs> he was a cyclone, 
And, and I mean, look what came out of that mine. So if you're a cyclone, I have a mini little prop to show you. The most important thing for cyclones is to do things that only require one step. One step. Put things on hooks and in cubby holes. If you have a child who is a cyclone, open bins. If you, if you look at how children's um, toy storage is designed and you're a grown up cyclone, use that system. That will work for you. <laughs> Everything's open and it's easy to get to. And the most important thing for any cyclone is rituals are my friend. Rituals. Same time, same place. My keys go here. My sunglasses go here. <laughs> my phone goes here. My wallet goes here. So if you will just embrace one or two little rituals like that, it'll change your life as a cyclone. Cyclones? Cyclones? We've got a lot of cyclones here, but they're not raising their hand with passion. So let's see. Let's see you cyclones. Okay. And who's a cyclone and loves it? Sure. Uh, t tell us why. I do make those quick decisions, and my memory, unfortunately, you know, since kids and I'm getting older, it's not as good as it used to be. That is something that I've had to learn that I have to write things down. But what I, what I do love what you said is that you, um, you know, you have the memory and stuff like that. But I do have my rituals, and I am teaching my kids the same thing. I put my stuff exactly where. I know I'm going to find it because otherwise I, I will never find a key or my purse or my phone or that. And I do have those rituals and they work wonderfully. Yay, rituals are your friend. Mm -hmm. Rituals are your friend. Um, also, for cyclones, I just there's this company called LYNK. I just really like all their stuff. So I don't have the patience to put my scarf through those holes in those hangers that are called yeah. scarf hangers. <laughs> I don't like those. I like to be able to just throw my scarves on something. And I just saw this the other day, so I thought I would bring it to show you gals. And it's a scarf organizer. It weighs like five pounds. I don't know why they made it weigh so much. But I, this would be great. If you think cyclone, one step. This is what they like. And if you have children who are cyclones and you have a toy box, take the lid off because they'll never put it down. So just take the lid off, and maybe they'll, they'll use it that way. So the last style, number six, is the historian. Historians as a group can either be super organized or super disorganized. And the ones who call me are the ones who are super disorganized. Historians love history. They revere it. If it weren't for historians, we wouldn't have libraries. We wouldn't have museums. We wouldn't have the Mona Lisa. So they are the protectors for the future of things that are one of a kind. So historians, um, they're always willing to dig for more answers. <laughs> so the historians that have a lot of stuff also sometimes have a problem of keeping things that have no value. And this is the distinction. This is where it gets a little troublesome. So one of the things I would say, it, are you really ever going to have this fixed? <laughs> are you really ever going to sell this on eBay? Are you really going to sell this on Craigslist? Does it have value to you in your life today? Have your children told you time and again they don't want your furniture? <laughs> so <laughs> this is a big thing with people downsizing. That's what happens. So for historians, um, they need to remember, keep it in the heart, not in the desk, <laughs> because they will keep everything. They're very sentimental, very sentimental. And they have difficulty separating the item from the emotion from maybe the person who gave it to them. Um, so for historians, I love metro shelving, stainless steel shelving. It's big. It's on wheels. It costs $125. You can get it at all the big box stores. And what it does is a theme in organizing. To maximize the space, go vertical. You get those big shelving units, put them, peripheralize them around your garage. Don't put them in the middle. You've got to park the car there. <laughs> <laughs> and Sterilite brand shelving's my favorite. It lasts. Get the latches. It's stronger. It's worth $2 extra. And put things in and label them and group like-kind items. 
So if you have a bin and it has a whole bunch of different kinds of stuff in it, it's not really very useful. So if you're going to be a historian, be an organized historian so you can enjoy your stuff. So, you know, if you want it, you want to be able to find it. So um, how many of you are historians? I am. My husband. <laughs> I am. I, I am a historian. I am not sentimental. <laughs> so for those of you who are historians and love it, tell me what you love about it. Yes. I have some of the most amazing books, some of them are like 200 years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see? We need people like you. We need those things, so thank you.